I am so excited right now because I've been doing music for the last, uh, gosh, 30 years. But over the last 30 years, I've realized the value of video. If you just saw that video, perhaps you have goosebumps or you can call them chicken skin, raised school, raised pores, whatever you call them. Perhaps you were impacted just by that video. If it wasn't for video, we wouldn't be able to get our message out. We wouldn't be able to get our music out to the same platform. We wouldn't be able to raise support. We wouldn't be able to, well, we probably wouldn't be watching you right now. This is video. And you probably wouldn't have heard about this if it wasn't for our Hosanna music video. So video is so crucial. It is It is almost half of what we do right now and today we're gonna have an unprecedented look into everything that we do that is video and to do so i have two of the most knowledgeable cinematographers that i've ever worked with out of a hundred some odd music videos um right here to my left is luis eduardo juarez and uh luis you started off when did you first start filming something I started experimenting with video in 2005, so, but it wasn't like too serious, you know, just yeah. taking interviews with my Handycam stuff. Okay, Handycam, nice. And then I got student loan and I went to film school. So what film there, school did you go to? I went to New York Film Academy. Okay. Uh -huh, so I took there one year, a whole four year, but it was two years, actually. It was two, two so, whole years. Uh -huh, but one full year, like. Full time. You and know? you did something else that I absolutely love about all this is you didn't just say, hey, I'm going to learn uh, filming from behind the camera. You said, I'm going to learn it from in front of the camera. And you got to be an extra in a whole lot of movies. Tell us some of the stars, some of the people you worked with just just by saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to learn how they do it from the other side of the camera as yeah, well. Yeah, I started in 2004 working as extra. So I saw a lot of famous doctors and cinematographers and directors working. Yeah. So I was there watching, watching. That was my idea, you know, to go there. And I, I was, I had the opportunity to meet uh, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, nice. Yeah. We, uh, every once in a while, if you follow him, by the way, Luis Eduardo Juarez, is yes. that is that it? Juarez? Oh, Indie phone. In, oh, Indie phone. Yeah. Indie phone. Um, F O N E, right? Yeah. Um, it, if you follow him every once in a while, you see a picture of him with famous people. Name some of the famous people you've taken pictures of. A bunch, but <laughs> yeah, Will Smith is one of my favorites. Uh huh. Uh, I met Tom Cruise, uh, Angelina Jolie, mm -hmm. Brad Pitt, uh, a lot of, a lot. Amen. Amen. And so as you as you did that, then I met you. And at that time, you were playing drums, you were doing videography, you you were going to film. I school. was surfing with him. You were too. surfing with me. <laughs> <laughs> and and we just became friends. And eventually, it was a few years into our friendship that we started filming together. Yes. First video we decided to do together. We're like, hey, let's go to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, come along, Luis. Okay, the airline ticket costed me an extra 100 bucks for him to come or 200. And he said, where are we going to film? I said, I have no idea. All I know is that I have these pieces of pottery, and together they're going to make a cross. He's like, okay. And so each day at each concert, we would ask the promoter or the pastor, we would say, hey, where's a cool place we could film around here? And the end result was the Hosanna music video, 16 million views later. <laughs> God is good. Oh, and yes. and needless to say, that, that video put us on the map in many ways. And now fast forward some six, seven years later, I get a chance to work with another director. And this was, th this meeting was very unique. This is Benjamin here. Say hi, Benjamin. Yeah. <laughs> I, I met him, at, we were backstage in, in Manila, the Philippines. And there were two very attractive people backstage. He and his wife. And it turns out, you know, when you see two people, you're like, wow, you are, you are a beautiful couple. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, you're models. And then as as we see him, he's got his, his camera and he's shooting videos. And then his wife has her camera and, she, and she's shooting photos. And I'm like, they make a great team. And then I really realized that you were a famous actor when we're playing in a mall 
and as we're on stage, I think my wife or somebody whacks my shoulder as we're on stage playing and points me over to one of those big digital billboards. And there you were, dude. <laughs> you were on the billboard, <laughs> literally for all to see. I'm like, this guy who's serving and filming for free right now as a missionary is a, a legitimate model equal to Yves Saint Laurent model or something like that. So you've had the chance over the years to be, I know, in front of the camera. You've mm -hmm. done multiple yeah. commercials. You've done the equivalent of all the top brands in America, um, throughout Asia. And where else have you done? Have you done the acting? The 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 the. the any, where else have you been a model and actor? Yes. Uh, so I started in Thailand, and then I, oh. I made a um, yeah. I went to Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, um, China, Hong Kong. And pretty much the whole Southeast Asian region. And um, I also modeled in Europe a little bit, in Germany and in Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, but mainly in the Southeast Asian market. So you're used so to I'm, having a camera in your face. Yes, that's right. And you're used yeah. to seeing people do it right and do it wrong and be very specific and then not care. You're used to seeing all exactly. different sides. That's right. And yeah. when did you start looking at things from the other side of the lens? Uh, I started in 2011 um, through my ex-girlfriend. She brought me into that that mm -hmm. uh, directing and um, filming. She just got me curious and interested. And uh, uh, yeah, since then I, I went also to New York Film Academy. And I no, just no out that Luis went also to the school. <laughs> you also. guys both went. To, that's why I like working with you guys. Yeah. So, so that's great. So so you went in the New York Film Academy, LA. Yeah. Yes, in Universal. Yeah. Universal Studios. Yes. That's cool. Yeah, so I went to Australia to do that oh, there. Okay. Oh, that's, okay. so cool. that's yeah. funny. You guys both went to New York and it wasn't in New York. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> okay. yeah, no, that was, that was a pretty hands-on course, so it was pretty good. Yeah. That's great. Yes. That's great. And then that's something that I found very interesting in our whole story is once we met you, once we connected with you guys, we also found out that you had a bit of a testimony that mm -hmm. you were not a believer in Christ. Your yes. wife had come to Christ. Your wife had been praying for you for some time, and you didn't want to hear about Jesus at all. Tell us what happened. I did not want to have to do anything with Jesus. And uh, any, any, any words that she brought up from the Bible, like God, uh, Jesus, and all that, I, I was just completely rejecting. So I think it, um, it, it's, it, it was kind of triggering me. So I, I just repelled it. Uh, and then she, instead of trying to get, get um, yeah, trying to, to talk about uh, Christianity, she used music. So she, she used like Christian worship music and there was a lot of reggae in there as well. And I liked reggae at that time. So um, yeah, a lot of uh, Christafari reggae as well. So <laughs> I, I got curious and then I was asking, I, I don't know really exactly what they're singing about, but it just felt deep. It was just mm -hmm. it just hit me. It resonated somehow inside of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that helped me softening my heart and and opening up to receive Jesus. That's awesome. That's How cool. God you, God can use music, this universal language. Now you are Absolutely. half German, half was it Chinese or Thai or what are you? What's the other half? I'm a quarter German. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm a quarter Italian. I'm a Chinese and I'm Vietnamese. First language is. German. Second language? Well, it's it's more English actually. <laughs> English, English is your first language. Yeah. Okay, and do you do you speak uh, uh, Tagalog? Uh, a few words. Okay, you lived in in Philippines when we met you. And Luis, yes, where are you from? Guatemala. Guatemala. That's right. So you guys are are not from America. And when I met you and your wife, Benjamin, we were so taken by you guys that we said we want to take you guys on a tour with us. We were planning on doing Papua New Guinea. The tour canceled. Fast forward a year or two, our videographer leaves and um, the, the tour videographer leaves and we had to find somebody and you guys said yes. You guys flew to Brazil with us. Your wife was super excited because she had never been to Brazil in, in how many years? 
Uh, three years. By then. Three years, and she's from Sao Paulo. You yes. guys come to Sao Paulo with us. You decide to stay a few extra days in Sao Paulo, and you're yeah. still there. You found out on tour that you were pregnant, yeah. <laughs> or your yeah, wife was, yeah. and now you're going to have yeah, the baby there. So, so you are working virtually from there with us, and you are working on a few videos. What's the most recent video that you did? Uh, there's the he, uh, he is risen music video. Yeah, so check that out. And the most music recent music video you did with us is a moment to pray. Moment to pray. Yeah, we did that one from scratch in like three days locally. Okay. Um, he also edited and shot half of uh, You Are Loved, and we want to show you guys a new music video that we haven't even released yet. I haven't done my editing portion on. But, and once we are done with you guys watching this, we're gonna get into the do's and the don'ts of videography, of cinematography, all the things that we've learned wrong and right over the years. But in the meantime, real quick, I want to play this for you because I'm so excited and I want, and, and I think it's, I think you guys will like it as well. Okay, here we go.
Thank you so much for your comments, everyone. When I initially wrote the song, it, we had come home from a tour, and Justin played me a rhythm, and once I heard the rhythm, I was like, oh, man, I just saw these images. I, I instantly had the hook. We, within a day, it was recorded. We were so excited. And I just imagined the, the stomping, the, what do they call that? I, I think it's, it's not just stomping, but it's uh, stepping, stepping and stomping. I imagined that. And that meant urban, and that meant New York, because there's no place more urban than that. And I was thinking the sound, when you close your eyes and listen to it, you don't think day. Like when you hear you are loved, you think night. I mean, when you hear you are loved, you think day, it's bright, it's happy, it's upbeat. But this one kind of, the tones, the the everything, the minor key, it, it to me it says darkness. And so that got me thinking, well, we got to... We got to play with night, and, and and what's the best way, Benjamin, to shoot at night? Uh, is there any other better better way than boca? <laughs> tell tell them what boca is. Um, boca is when you um, have out of focus light behind you. You have some. Uh, yeah, basically you have some light sources behind you which are completely out of focus. And then it creates this beautiful kind of, uh, how do you describe that? Mocha. Uh, yeah, bokeh. polka dots. It <laughs> sounds it sounds like polka dots, and and I think that it that it sounds like that because well that that's how I remember that it's bokeh. But if you look at at some of those images there, it is um, you you'll get these big old like kind of hexagonal like the shape of a stop sign lights behind us and and i think that the technique of doing that is you go really far from me and you make sure you have a backlight source right mm -hmm. and then you zoom in on me get me in focus and then the stuff that's further from me will look really out of focus mm -hmm. right but the closer you get to me the less you get the bulk look right mm -hmm. yeah, exactly yeah is that did i just describe yeah. it Yeah. also it works about a lot of things. One is if you are full frame, if your computer is full frame, right? Your computer, your camera is full frame. That's poker. And also the lens, if, if, if you are shooting in, like the f-stop has to be like 2.8 less, you know? You can you can do it with, with 5.6, but it depends. You can play it around. But that's like that video, like you're showing right now, that's uh, 200 millimeter and 8.8 .8 at least. I know nothing about full frame the millimeters full. or anything, but I just love the fact that she's so in focus. And if you look at what's going on behind her, there's this, do you call that a key light or whatever that is behind her? That's lighting, uh, the, that's lighting the other side of her face, the far side of her face. And that bokeh, it almost, if it's the right color lights, it's very Christmassy. Mm -hmm. In fact, we used that for mm -hmm. what, what was the music video we did, Angels We've Heard on mm -hmm. High. But yeah, that's something that we absolutely love. So we're going to be talking a little bit about lighting and different things like that. But why the importance of a music video? Benjamin, why is a music video so important? Talk to me. Um, well, I think today for two reasons. Yeah. Um, the first reason is that um, the attention span of people is just very short nowadays. So they want to see something visual. They want to see something fast. They want to just basically have it in their face. Yeah. So that's the first reason. And then second is just, um, yeah, just generally, I think the, the quality of, of filming nowadays, um, there's just a certain expectation that's there. And yeah, viewers just expect to, to have good quality videos and, um, see beautiful visual, visuals and images. Yeah. What do you think, Luis? For me, it's simple. It's just, you know, imagine the music is the spirit and the music video is the, the body, you know? Oh, the music is the spirit. The music video is the body. So it's like what we're creating the soul sonically. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. You can't, it's intangible. I mean, it's a hook. It can stay with you for forever but it's nothing you can touch exactly. you can remember it but when you i think when you marry it to images now some artists have sworn against them i remember tom petty 
uh, back in the day when he did a music video where he, it was the uh, was the Alice from Wonderland theme or whatever, he swore he would never do a music video again because he never wanted his his videos, his songs to mm -hmm. be attached to an image. And that happened to me also. I, I actually I always listen to songs. I don't want to watch the music videos because the music videos if they're if they can make happens, or break a yeah, song, they can exactly. make or break a song. <laughs> yes. But that being said, I, I think a great band that, that is, a, I don't, I don't want to recommend the band necessarily, but the fact that they're originating time and time again is Coldplay. Mm -hmm. If you watch their music videos, you one is one, one is backwards, one yeah. is one take yellow, one take. Um, each time they use different things, different concepts, different black light here, this and that. And so if you watch one, you don't watch them all. And and the music video goes all the way back to arguably the Beatles. I would think that now long before that there were music videos, but they were usually live performances or studio performances. The Beatles were the first ones to take the eight millimeter camera and some of these other things and say, Hey, let's try this backwards video. Let's try this. Let's try that. And they were taking together these, these songs and they were marrying them to images and then putting packaging those together as a movie. And they were hard, you know, hard, was it hard days night? Or, night yeah. You know, some of the uh, Sergeant peppers, all yeah, these things yeah. they were marrying them to images. And that is so crucial. I think for us as musicianaries, the difference between a music video, let's say, let's say we take a song and we just release it out there and a fan puts it up with the album cover. Let's say that's a thousand views. Let's say we put it up with the album cover and, and a good image. Maybe that's 10,000 views. Let's say we put it up with lyric video. We hire somebody on Fiverr to do a lyric video for a hundred bucks. That could be... 10 to 100,000 views at least. Let's say we do a music video and it, it will be at least 100,000 views over the time, but it could be a million. We have probably 14 or 15 that are a million, maybe 20 by now that are a million, but it could be multiple millions. Not that that viewership is the goal. The viewership isn't the goal to say, look what we've got. The viewership is the goal to say, look who we've told. Look how the gospel is spreading. And ultimately, we do these videos. We do at least one video a month. We've been doing music video over two weeks lately. Uh, but we do a video every month, not because we want everyone of them to do a million, but because we want to reach millions and millions of people. And each month, we've had the privilege of seeing about, well, two million people watch our videos, glory to God. And each one of those videos, like if you watch you are loved at the very end we give the gospel we actually lead them in the sinner's prayer so everything we're giving right now everything we're going to teach you we're going to get into the lesson now is with the goal of you using this for god if you want to learn how to do lighting and and cinematography and all these things on your own just to make money well there's a million things you can watch on youtube but we want to teach you how to do this entirely for jesus amen guys Anything you'd like to add before we kick into this, Benjamin or Luis? Very good. I'm okay. Awesome. Okay. So here we go. The do's. Let's talk about some do's. Uh, you want to go first, Benjamin? What are some of your do's? Things we they need to do when they're doing a music video. Things you wish you had learned earlier on. Um, are, we, are we talking now about um, cinematography or music video or both? All of the above. Yeah. Cinematography, cinematography, which applies to music videos. Mm. Okay, um, I think one of the most important things is the just the planning uh, bit of it. So, just before you even like um, go to location, just um, yeah, that you do as much as you can from home. So you do your research, um, you do pretty much location scouting already from home as much yeah. as you can before you leave, and then. Um, I mean, you can Google everything. You can even check on Instagram. And you can check what, what photographers have uh, done in this area. You can check what other that. film editors have done in this area. And then, um, yeah, important, I'd say, um, is also the weather forecast. 
Um, Weather forecast. Ooh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> you remember when we, we were filming a music video and all of a sudden it started raining? I'm like, okay, we're doing one about rain. <laughs> What's the song about rain? Two harbors. Let's go. <laughs> we were supposed to film Fishermen, but it was raining the whole time. So literally the forecast for the entire week was rain. I said, we're changing it and we're going to have to do a, a rain music video. Mm. Yeah, and that's... then it stopped raining. We're like, come on. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the weather forecast. Now I, I do this. I do a lot of this advanced work just by Googling places to photograph in Los Angeles. If I'm in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. um, the, you are not the first person in the world to, to have a camera trying to shoot. So we're going to be doing some shooting in a cemetery soon. You're going to be doing some shooting in a cemetery soon in Sao Paulo. And so I Googled for a few hours. I'm sure you've Googled for more hours. And how many times have you visited that cemetery now before you actually shoot? So doing that legwork helps you do a lot less figuring out and a lot less wasting of the time later. Absolutely, yeah. Anything you and want to add? And then when you shoot. Well, for me, it works always inverse. <laughs> he has to fix it afterwards. <laughs> no, no, first you need to find a good producer. <laughs> so he's in charge of looking for location. I'm, and yeah, stuff. He, he puts that on me. He gives me that job. Okay. I come with the vision, and then he and then he says, "What's that vision again?" And then, and then we go with that. But and that's the difference between between a, 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 a cinematography has different angles and different sides, and so he and I co-direct but he's the cinematographer. I will not tell him what well, I don't even know what an F-stop is. I uh, <laughs> just want to make sure it's done right. He makes sure what he sees is right. I make sure that what I see he sees is right. <laughs> I, I understand him that he loves to prepare. Yeah, yeah, that's that's beautiful. That's the German in him and I love about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is or the sometimes, Asian. <laughs> it's both. sometimes you don't have the time. You yeah, know? Well, sometimes it's where, we when we're touring, it's like we have this location, you know? Yeah, yes. you need to find something to get a nice shot, a, a nice angle to get that moment, you know, portrayed like nice. So I'm used to that, like working in a place in the moment and say, OK, let's go shoot. And I start figuring out what what is going to no, happen. I, I totally agree. I mean, there's there's just so much you can prepare. But when you get there, things change and yeah, yeah. you need definitely adjust yeah. you definitely don't want to stand there uh, arrive at the scene and be like okay so what are we going to do so you yeah. should at least have a plan and you should prepare you should write it out um i, I don't know here's the, one of my dues and then we'll get to one of your dues is marry a good song with a great video a bad song can ruin a good video and a, a bad video can ruin a great song so I think that's something you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, what are what are some other pet peeves? I know that you um. Every once in a while, we'll film something and we didn't quite get it done in time. We couldn't tell that story in Kibera because the drug lords were saying we had to get out of there before dark. And you're like, man, we needed to tell that story. And so we we reach out to our friends in Kenya and we say, hey, I need you to film this story. This is the script. I write out the script you then send them some instructions what are a bunch of the don'ts that you say <laughs> some of the don'ts you say do not do this what are they i actually i don't remember but what? yeah the don'ts are first the out of focus i hate that oh. when you don't have like a sharp focus you know and that's happened sometimes when you using uh, the 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 manual in dslr you know Okay, so manual, so, 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 the, so here's a huge do is make sure you're in focus. Yeah. In fact, there's a lot of things that you can fix in post. You don't want to have to paint yourself into a corner with, with the bad lighting or with this or with that, but focus is one of those things, to my knowledge, you, you can make something in focus, out of focus, but you can't really make something out of focus, in focus. Is yeah. that correct, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Here's another one is always make sure that the artist, if it's a music video, is singing in their full voice, not just mouthing it. I know for the first few music videos, a lot of times people just line up, just want to do this. But when they're doing that, they're not singing the same way if there's a, you know what I mean? So, not that I sing that way, but so, so they have to actually perform it 
And um, and should they look at the camera or not? Um, I think it depends really on the story, right? Yeah. Okay. Depends. That's. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I get. I get both. I get look at the camera. Don't look at the camera. Oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? Sometimes we do a bit of both. <laughs> what are some other do's? What are some other things that we want to encourage them to do? Like directing, I think is having a continuity of movement in the in the guy who is singing. Okay, continuity of movement. And, yeah, because well, that's, that's... So when, if you are doing a wide shot and you are going to do this and then that, and then you don't mm. have that movement to cut, it's going to be weird. You know, if mm. you are looking the camera in that shot and in the next one you are not, it, it weirds, you know? So it's sometimes weird. try okay. to put attention if, if like, example, if you do in certain war, you are looking to the to your left. Yeah. And put attention of that if you're doing it again. Sometimes, like Abby is a good one to to to, to do it always like the same, you know. Yeah, she's she's consistent. Yes, yeah, she's consistent. Yeah. Okay, consistent is very important with that. I, I, and and sometimes you have to direct. What are some of the things that you say to somebody, Benjamin, when you're working with them for the first time for a music video? Um, if they've never been behind the camera, what is what is something that that, that this cinematographer can learn to say or or not say? Um, I would say just being encouraging. So mm. instead of um, right away pointing out what you dislike, what you don't like, maybe point out the things that you like, and then work from there. Okay, that's the that's the honey versus or the catching a fly with molasses or honey versus vinegar. So so focus on the positives. Be encouraging. You definitely want to create an environment where they feel uh, they feel like oh I can thrive here, not like oh this person's this camera's on me and everything. Yeah, yeah. I definitely and let them try out things. Like um, just be less restrictive in the beginning, and then narrow it down to what you want. So and then. After they've gotten what they want, then you get what you want, and by then they hopefully they remember the lyrics. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> oh gosh, I want to I want to play a, a clip of a video right now. This is uh, I'm going to talk through it. So uh, just just because I think that this so we're not going to have the music for a second, but this is there's there's a reason why Hosanna is such a big video for us, and it's not because of the song i think the song is fantastic but let's see if i can do screen sharing right quick and uh, i want to talk through some of the things that louise had done here okay so um hopefully I, i'm actually do I, I i don't want to do audio do you see the screen guys you see it yeah okay can you hear me still mm -hmm. okay great all right so there's some things that louise did, did here if you look at the movement it's moving. The camera's moving to the left. The camera's moving to the right. The camera's moving. He's walking backwards. Somebody's holding his backpack as he's walking. Camera's moving to the left. Camera's moving with the the person. Camera's moving. Cam There's a lot of movement. Look at that. A, a steady cam is crucial if you can. But I love this shot right here. You see that? Mm -hmm. Where he was literally running around Avion as she's singing. He's running in a circle and typically running in the opposite direction that sh she's turning. And so you'll see it when she starts singing too, when she gets up on that hilltop, it's just epic. This is, there's a reason why this is such a good video. We did this all gorilla. We didn't p get any permits. We didn't pay for anything whatsoever. We just found these locations for free and worked with it. And uh, if you go to the end, You'll see that is what it's all about right there. So beautiful. It's all about the cross. It's all about leading people to the cross. And this shot right here, I love the playing with the sun right there. That that's I just love having sun in the back right there. And then, of course, at the very end, like I said, we're leading him to the cross. We were chasing daylight that day. Look at that. The sun was setting. We're like, run, run, run. Let's get that shot. Let's get that shot. And we did it all. The, all those scenes there with that rock behind us in one day. And um, it, was, uh, it was one of the most fruitful days that we've had 
so far in filmmaking. And to be honest, it's it's definitely been a time that we've been chasing ever since. Now I just need to find my screen again. <laughs> what, what what do you think about the things that I just shared as I as I find that, Benjamin? Oh, it's, it's just beautiful. The location is beautiful. And uh, yeah, the, the sunset shots in the end is just really, yeah, just amazing. Awesome. Okay, so let's, uh, Luis, how was it shooting that video? Any any tips you learned? I remember the one thing you had was you had this little track thing and you were pushing the camera back and forth the whole time on it. What's that thing called? Uh, yeah, it's a slider. Slider? The slider. I, I use that one a lot with them. Well, because we move too much and you know, the, the length is too big for the, my luggage. I start, I'm not bringing to some country. So yeah, well, yeah I, I, I used to use a lot of that because I love the, because the music has also has to have the music, you know, the time of the music to use it. Yeah. It's like for moment to pray, it would yeah. be great to do it, you know? Yeah. Um, but one thing I an love, upbeat song wouldn't necessarily need it, but a slower moving yeah. one is is it creates Gives a you song, that, yeah. majestic vibe. That slow, uh, slow song, and and also one of the tool I love is a sli uh, the Steadicam, but it's now it's a gimbal, gimbal mm -hmm. you know, and that gives you all the movements you need to you can to do show. the slider view now if you have a steady enough yeah. with that mm -hmm. without necessarily needing that thing yes um here's another tip that i've learned and i don't do it all the time and i, I know the directors love it when i do it but i'll break the song up into into bite-sized chunks so there will be an audio for verse one and it'll be the end of the intro going into verse one and then the beginning of the chorus then there'll be another audio file that'll be chorus one and it'll be the end of verse one going into the chorus the whole chorus and then the instrumental afterwards and so we'll have sometimes five to seven different audio files that we're playing and then we kind of mark down and we try to do two locations for each section and when we have that then we can choose if we like one better than the other or both mm -hmm. but that way we know we've covered the entire entire song i always say these words if you write anything down right now write this take me somewhere show me something teach me something make me feel something mm -hmm. and if that if that feels something can ultimately lead to a conversion, to a faith move, and cinema can do that. I mean, how many of you have watched The Chosen? It is so powerful. I, I started reading all the gospels with just this passion again. Not that I wasn't reading them before, but after watching these eight episodes, I'm just, I'm going through the epistles and, and I, or the gospels over and over again. And uh, I, I just want to encourage you, movies, film, you have the ability to lead someone in the right direction or astray. Pornography, secular stuff that just doesn't give God the glory, uh, or you can lead them to Christ. Every good uh, evangelist, Every good Christian artist needs a videographer or, or or team that can help. So that's crucial. Anybody want to add anything to that? Yeah, just I think it's um, when you said early on that video can or visuals can evoke certain emotions. Yes, I think that's definitely um, key to think about. And I mean, so much can add to that. Um, yeah. The angles they're using, the comp composition that you're using. Um, yes. Just to give a small example, you can you can uh, make somebody look, uh, let's say, uh, inferior if, if he's like really low and the camera is really high, or or the opposite if if, yeah. uh, if the camera is low and you're high, you you look superior, you know, things like that. And it mm. just just um, evokes certain emotions in the viewer. Definitely. So you can really direct basically um, where you want to go, where you want to take the viewer emotionally as well. Yeah, and some of those. When you're doing the bite-sized chunks, um, 
you don't just this okay the biggest pet peeve that i have when i start watching a music video is when every single cut of the of the artist is from like their their stomach up mm -hmm. <laughs> or every single cut is from their feet to above their head yeah i'm just like ah and it just keeps jumping from that to that to that to that they yeah. just think people think if i stand in front of this wall that's a cool wall it will give it, it, i will look cool and it does the exact opposite it creates this mm -hmm. one dimensional thing so you guys love to break the shots up to, into into different segments so for instance let's say we when we were in la boca in in uh, argentina we yeah. shot uh in in each location a few different locations maybe four locations there we shot each time we were in that location what did you shoot so if you first shoot like a master shot which is like the one that you can fall back to anytime um there i would just uh, go first wide to have everything in the frame define a wide that, you're seeing the bottom of the feet you're seeing the top of the head right Yes, that's right. Yeah, and maybe and by the way, of the all of these we're talking horizontal. That vertical stuff is yes. a whole different ballgame. Absolutely, totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then from there, um, yeah, just go closer, and just um, um, so I would just go for for three or four different uh, shot sizes. I would go wide, depending also on the time, but I would go wide first, and then I would go into the medium shot, and then close ups, and then more details. Yeah. Really sometimes you, sometime you can do the opposite because the the weather because you know you need to start with the close-up because they are sweating yeah uh, if it's a lot of movement so you start close so you know the makeup and yeah. is perfect in that that's shot. a great idea and and this is where he and i have a bit of a rub because he'll want to start with the close-up first but I don't know the lyrics yet. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and so I'll be like, okay, I sang this a year ago. I'm trying to remember, but I, um, yeah, I, so here, here's one thing that we've actually done in the past. Um, we've added a, a click track to the, the bite size parts that we're filming. So it'll be, it'll be like first one, duck, 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 duck. I see the king of glory. I see the king of coming in the clouds of fire. Coming in the clouds. <laughs> the whole world straight. And and so you'll hear you'll hear me in within an AM voice saying the cue beforehand. And then Avion will sing to herself. And then you'll hear me saying the next part so that the actor, the singer, the the songwriter doesn't have to focus because you think you know the lyrics to your song, but all of a sudden somebody's got a reflector in your face. It's burning your eyes out. They're filming you. And now a director is shouting at you, telling you to do to not look at the camera, and then telling you to look at the camera. There, somebody else is telling you to fix your shirt, and then the continuity person is telling you your hairs in your face, and all. And 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 during all that, you're supposed to remember a song that you haven't released yet. It's not easy. So, so those cues are very crucial or a lot of practice and performance. I would break it down into this. Maybe the farthest away would be a drone. Then there's a far away, like if you can get on a roof or something just to show, if you want to show that they're in the middle of nowhere, you want to get far away. So, so Luis wasn't doing just a body shot when, uh, when Nikita was walking on sand dunes. He got as far away from her as possible and to show the grandeur. I'll, I'll pull that up. Um, let me see here. Give me a second. No, I won't pull it up. I'll just show it on my phone because <laughs> it's easier. Um, so, yeah. So, so sometimes you want to do a shot like this where it's just showing. I mean, that composition is brilliant. That's, that's one of my favorite compositions. You see Avian and I walking up. That is just genius. And of course that, that's kind of the go-to. If if you default and only had one shot, that's the kind of shot you and, want. And I sent that one because the reflector, because I love how it works. Yeah, the ref that he, he, he loves how the reflector works on her in that moment. Interesting fact on that day, 
we used the reflector so much that the next day we were supposed to film Avion again and her eyes looked like a vampire. They were blood red. She could barely see. That's a further away shot. With a uh, foreground too. With the foreground, that this section right here is a wall. So that is that's from What a Beautiful Name. That was shot on an iPhone. But this is this is what I was talking about. Some of those far away shots. That's so cool. that's and that moon was added in, in special effects that's later. That's the shots uh, Mark's love, so that's why. I yeah, I love it. that because if you if you see the close up later on, you'll see that's frost, frost on dunes. It looked like Tatooine. I just love it. And this is a beautiful soft light. Was that a reflector and a yes. reflector and sunset behind me? I love backlighting. So um, those are some of the sure. some of, and then this. You yeah, shot it when I did the shot earlier on. And that's actually like, just from the quality, actually, I really loved it. And then in the end, I saw that uh, it was shot all by iPhone. iPhone 5, so you, was it? Or the 7? Seven. 7. So you actually, you don't need, you no. don't need the latest equipment. That's the why the when June 17th, we're going to do a June class. June 17th, we're going to do a class on iPhone filmmaking. This guy is IndiePhone, at IndiePhone um on on instagram he had his own film festival about it he's literally written the book on iphone filmmaking you can film with an ipad you can film with a phone in fact he's working on a project right now that is not just shot in an iphone but edited in an iphone and uh, music on iPhone. music iphone everything iphone so it is possible it is possible to do that so yeah um so i would i would say far away uh full body shot i would say waist up i would say chest up now if you're shooting in 4k and you're planning on releasing it in 1080 or something you can have a little bit of freedom to say i'll cut in you can't pull out but um so waist up chest up head shot and then i you know me i love those super close-ups sometimes even to where you're doing this or doing this I, I think that the more the closer you get to a, a person, the more intimate it gets, and um, that can, there's a place and a time for that as well. Any thoughts on that, guys? If you do that and you cut back and forth, what you don't want to do in cutting back and forth is have do they what do they call it a jump cut or a jump shot or a, hack, a jump cut where you imagine where you, I'm looking at, at Benny right now. Go ahead and talk, Benny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so when I see him, if I, if, if I see him from chest up and then we cut to him at the beach chest up, unless you're trying to make it look like he, like an I dream of genie, he, he appears somewhere else, um, it, is, it is not becoming. You need to go. And so you look at our videos, if you were to look at our timeline, I mean, how many, sometimes we stack them 15 high, 20 high mm -hmm. of different takes. So it'll be at least seven of each scene, and then our okay. directors. Uh, Mark use just two and erase everything. <laughs> I use this two and erase everything, <laughs> but but if if we only used only shot the first two, it could be the ones that I wouldn't have kept. <laughs> so that's why I do the same thing with with vocal takes too. My wife has an incredible voice. You think she sounds flawless on the first take? She insists on taking twenty takes. In a future class, we're going to show you how we track her vocals and how we comp it down. It's the same concept. Yeah. We we make it composite. We comp it down. We take the best, the best, the best. Mm -hmm. There's no way that if you're holding a camera, especially on a gimbal, and the person is moving, the two takes are going to be exactly the same. The lighting is going to change. Their mannerism is going to change. They're going to get more tired. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's something to be said about that. Um, but we cut back and forth between those, and, um, and that's how we edit. And it takes a lot of time. All of this, mm -hmm. all of this takes a lot of time. Anything you guys want to add to that? Yeah. Let's talk lighting, Benny. Yeah, um, lighting, OK. Time of day to shoot. So uh, we had that conversation actually before when I wanted to get the band. You and I want to arm wrestle. You and I want to arm wrestle right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you'd win. 
<laughs> you know what he's going to say, right? What's he going to say? In the morning. In the morning. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, I, I have an interesting work ethic. I the midnight oil the late night hours are the best for me for mm. creativity and we do a lot of late night shows so i go to sleep at the earliest 4 30 the latest 6 30 or 7 a.m every day so when he says let's film at six i'm like <laughs> he's, he's going to bed <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my first cycle of sleep at that time. So you say, no, what you prefer, though, is what time? Uh, I prefer morning, um, just for the reason that it doesn't get dark after, you know, golden hour. So um, mm. so you have a little bit longer to shoot in case anything is missing. Yeah, that's the main reason. And uh, secondly, let's say you're in a, in a location somewhere far and it's hard to get to maybe you can even do some pickup shots in the evening again okay yeah so if you do morning you take a break the times that are ideal or least ideal to shoot unless you are in complete shade are i would say arguably maybe 11 to 3 would you say um, yeah yeah it all depends on the time of the year and you know and, and, and where country you're in. yeah the country you're in if you're if you're lower hemisphere upper hemisphere it's going to be very very different but what you don't want is light directly overhead what why do we not want that and that sometimes some people say let's sure. shoot we got to shoot at noon right the sun is the strongest why would we not do that luis it is harsh shadows um you you look like a, you have those Raccoon eyes. Raccoon eyes, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, it, it's, it's terrible. You get the nose, yeah. the nose ring or whatever that thing's called. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's so. Not a good high contrast, too high contrast. And 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 one of the, the challenges that you've had, Luis, is we've done a lot of stuff in Kenya. And they have the most beautiful people in the world there that have skin pigments that cameras are not made for. <laughs> and so their their tone in like for instance one of the artists we were filming their tone is so dark it's almost like it got a blue tint to it and so there was the real challenge that you were trying to have was to find that without direct sunlight direct sunlight makes one side of their face completely white mm -hmm. the other side completely black and so how do you how do you adjust for that for an extreme dark skin tone it depends the the hour of the day, but I I will always like to have the sun as backlight. Sun as backlight. Mm -hmm. So you have that uh, nice separation of the yeah. background, and then with the bounce, you know the the, the reflector. The reflector, yeah, you can lit up uh, all the or her face or his face. I look at every one of these shots that mm -hmm. that are on my phone that that we were just talking about and i realized that I'm, every one of them that's major backlight there yeah um every one of them has one thing in common the the backlight is stronger than than the front light and then there's something else that we use there's two things that we use if you have a phone you can start filming and we'll get into that in a future class but the next thing you buy is this. Now I swear on the gold side because I like to look orange and look more tan. He swears not against it because he says it makes me look like a pumpkin. What color, <laughs> what side do you prefer, Benny? Yeah, I like the silver one. Better than like, both of you agree, but silver? Preferably, preferably white. Yeah. Okay, so, so we you have know this. The... We have, we have the, the silver inside of this is silver gold sorry silver gold and black and white. white and what do they call that bounce bouncing light or what do you mean yeah about a bounce or whatever reflector obviously reflector? so the, we try I think it's the five and five and one reflector yeah five Pick in one reflector oh, okay. i would that would be the very first thing that i would get if you even if you don't have a camera yet and you have a good phone, I would yep. get that. 
Second thing that I would get is one of these. I would I would personally get two of these. That's what it's called. Take a screenshot of that right now if you're watching this. And um, yeah, Andy scene. And this one turns on with white light. It does, what are the two different types of white lights? Daylight and, yeah, Tustin. Tustin mm -hmm. and, or whatever, Fluorescent, and daylight. Yeah. And then you turn the knobs and, and with those knob turns, you start to get every hue that you can imagine, every color that you imagine. So what we'll do, when you watch, next time you watch the uh, lock and step music video, you'll realize there's a blue here and a pink here. Sometimes it's a hair light. Sometimes it's on this side, or on the on the side, like even right now, the lighting. Look, Luis, look at the camera. Look at the camera. Okay, you see how? Lean back a little bit, Luis. Okay, you see how once this side of his face is light and this side of his face is dark. Now, if you take a colored light and put it behind him, like about there from far, it can make this part this part really pop and that's something that we like to go for a lot especially so, when we're filming at night go ahead yeah show this the photos i'll show the photos so i'm trying to find one that actually has it uh, okay there. so this one if you look at her hair her hair is purple it's not really that color normally but it creates that and we probably had a yellow or a pink on the other side or something but yeah, there's a lot of that throughout that. Um, if you watch it our, like she had a she had a very like um, close light in the front of her as well, like yeah, a white. Uh, yeah, uh huh. So you so you we typically would have the white here and the the color there, or if there is nat some sort of natural light, then we'll add we'll find two colors that would contrast, like a red and a yellow or something to that effect. And the nice thing of this is like you can run. With this one, so when the police is coming, <laughs> you can run. You can okay. run when the police is coming. Yeah. small light. Very it's, to with. And, the, and those, yeah, those. We have two of those and reflectors, and they pretty much cover what we need to do. And and everything that we try and do is as cheap as possible, or free. Free is always good. Obviously, you have to get the lights, and they're less than a hundred bucks. That I know. Okay, so you said silver part other reflector we talked about nights at light uh, lights at night and i would say colored leds are great if you watch our 99 for one music video every single shot the back has a pink or a blue or a this or that and i use the inspiration for that music video i wanted everything to look like it was in a lava lamp you know, the lava lamp where the bubbles are doing this. I wanted everything to have that that theme. And that's something that I want to encourage you when you listen to a song. Close your eyes. What do you see? And this is a, a huge part of cinematography, you know, the mood you give to the image. Exactly. The mood. I mean, the new Joker movie compares, compared to you know, at a, a previous Batman, completely different the way they did cinematography. Completely different. I want to talk about lighting for a second because I'm, I'm really passionate about it. So I'm going to, I'm going to do some screen sharing. Give me a second as I still trying to figure out how to use this thing. But uh, there was something that Benny had shared with me earlier. And uh, I just took a few screenshots. Here we go. So here are some of the lighting techniques. This is a light over the head, not too high, not too low. It creates this, a butterfly lighting. Yeah. And the next one, this is, if it goes off to one side, in this case, the left side, it creates loop lighting because it looks like he has a nose loop. And you'll notice also that there's a little bit of a shadow here on the right side. This is loop lighting, not extreme, but you see that? Yeah. You see that there, the depth. This is especially good for round faces. Mm -hmm. Rembrandt lighting, my favorite. It's called that because of this. And because the guy, Rembrandt, would always do things where there was a lot of light here, 
And then over here, there's this triangle of light that you get. Mm -hmm. You'll see it all through cinematography. These are, there's different kinds of lighting. So this is that triangle. It's not a literal triangle, but if you squint your eyes a little bit, it creates drama. Could you imagine this image if, if it was just flat light? Mm -hmm. And then there's broad light. There's dark side. Now this is all stuff that I wished I had learned in the first few music videos, not years later. But this is my favorite look right here. We used a lot of this in the Outsiders music video, especially at the end, where all the focal point is is the other side of the face. If you ever watched Breaking Bad, almost everything here blocks, the light blocks this area and focuses on what's on the other side. It creates a real cinematic look. Split lighting, another thing I love, partly because my face is not the skinniest in the world, but you have half of the face pretty dark, but you, it's not completely dark. And split lighting, as I mentioned, the Joker is very common when you want to do something very dramatic. And then there's the halo effect. We were talking about backlighting, having somebody lit from the back. If the sun is being blocked by their heads or, or not in the shot, if the sun is in the shot, you're going to have those rays coming through. And that can be cool as well, depending on the camera. And then there's back hair light what you don't see is that this is lit right here on the right side and behind and so we'll do this with a color at night and it's really nice and again this is kind of a rembrandt if you look because he's got that triangle so and then there's the fill light using something like this or as and this is the guy i forgot his name what is his name again um hunter or something like that but uh, Parker, Parker. Okay, yeah. Parker so you, Wolbeck. Yeah, so you can you can do one of his classes if you want to, but look at the difference with a lot of fill and with no fill. The difference. I will put. Mm -hmm. I will give the Michelle those um, links. As yeah, just goes. great, great. Forward those links, and um, and then this is the low key light. I love this look right here because it creates drama. You wouldn't do this for an for Mystery. a beautiful, upbeat, upbeat, happy worship song, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't do that. No. But for a dark song, you would do that. And and this right here is what they call checkerboard. So this side is darker. It's the mm -hmm. same background. This, yeah. this side is brighter. And so the Compensate. bright contrasts the dark, and the bright contrasts the dark. So I just, I love these techniques. These are things that I would strongly encourage for you to learn because they will they will literally revolutionize the way you do things. And from here on out, I, I, the funny thing is, what you didn't see in this in this conversation was before we started, <laughs> Luis was opening and shutting curtains and shutting these black back blinds, and he's like, "Oh, the lighting is horrible," and I'm like, "That's why I love working with you." And look at Benjamin's lighting. Look at it. It's flawless. He's got a little bit of Rembrandt there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because these guys know what they're doing. So you need to know what you're doing as well. Any other tips on lighting, guys, before we move on? Um, one thing would be um, just for the skin. So the, the, the closer the light to the, to the face, the, the softer the skin will look. So I think that's also quite important for, for women as well, um, especially for women. Um, yeah, so you can use, uh, you can either bring the light closer to you, you can, you can, um, you can put like, a, a something in front of it, like a, a sheet or a yeah. sheet or something like that, just to make the, the light source just bigger. And the bigger the light mm -hmm. source, the, the, the less, um, harsh shadows you will have. Mm -hmm. okay, so. Something for, uh, light skin also, it's you use a whiteboard and you with those lights with full power you bounce that light to the skin oh, okay so very it's good. very it's very soft light you bounce uh, the light. and you can see it in a 
million dollar budget movies like they are just with the film camera uh, with a huge bounce board and that's it you know mm -hmm. and they're using the 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 start the sun as source light mm -hmm. and that's it oh, wow very good yeah and uh, I, some other things I would say, aside from that, is, yeah, sheets, diffuse it as much as you can. Use, play with daylight as much as you can because it is the best light in the world. <laughs> it, it is a, a, a cheap you know, way to produce. Too. Now, there are certain lights that you don't want them to use because it'll make it flicker or whatever. What are those lights? Uh, fluorescent lights. Okay. Yeah, it depends how you use the shutter speed, but that's, but that's a very technique technical stuff okay watch the shutter speed regarding fluorescent yeah the fluorescent lights, lights are they they have a like a flicker okay i actually do have a link as well in my resources that i can okay. put in there go ahead Explaining and po that. post them in the chat if you can while i'm while i'm sharing something here um yeah. some other something else that i would encourage you guys to do sound design uh there are so many great sound packs you can in fact you can just just rip them off of YouTube if you need to, but sound design is crucial in music videos as well. We spent a good bit of time doing sound design on quite a few of our music videos, especially the last one where the guys are running and stuff like that. Another thing, shoot lots of B-roll. I know he hates it when I say that, but we always end up using at least, yeah. at least 10 shots of B-roll. And we end up also getting B-roll from stock sites stock footage sites we're going to get into that on the next class that we're going to be talking about this is going to be a two-part class guys where it's impossible for us to get through everything today uh the next class is going to be i believe exactly a week from today right and that's how to do a how to do a music video for free or virtually free if somebody could look up the exact time and let me know that uh, for that class um here's another thing and, and these guys are so good at it, and that's why they're in this class right now. Look at the big picture and find things wrong. If you don't have a critical eye, um, you need to learn how to get one. These guys will be fixing Avion's Dread time and time again, or fixing this or fixing that. You need to find out what the artist likes. They don't like to be shot from this side. They do like to be shot from this side. They like to be shot from above. They like to. You can't have the artist at the end of the video say, I don't like any of those shots. And that's happened with us, with other directors. Um, so don't miss the details, like the telephone pole coming out of the person's head <laughs> or, or their hair in their face especially for continuity purposes it's always good to have one other person just standing behind the director and just looking and saying hey um did you realize that there's a this or that there's a a cuss word spray painted on the wall behind you <laughs> the director sometimes doesn't see that because he's so focused is the person in focus <laughs> this and that the movement and you have to watch out for that stuff continuity is crucial multiple different shots as i said synchronization of lips make sure that the camera and the artist can hear the music why is that crucial luis because the sync you know he needs to be like exactly with the time everything to match the song with the lips yeah so what we do is we use something called a boom it's made by bose it's about this big it has a big like handle on it you can clip it on to the belt of the director and that way it'll be close enough to him and so that the camera can hear it and then you just need to make sure it's loud enough and then we like to have a separate person usually justin controlling the audio and having the song ready have the song ready offline on dropbox so that you, if you don't have Wi-Fi, because you won't have Wi-Fi where you're shooting, if you're shooting at a waterfall in the bottom of the Grand Canyon, <laughs> you can't be like, come on, where's the song? <laughs> you can't be trying to pull up Spotify or whatever. Have it ready offline already and make sure that the, that the artist can hear it loud and the camera can hear it loud. Otherwise, it will, you will be out of sync. Anything else on that, Benjamin? Um, yeah, for what you said earlier on about just to check the whole frame and what's going on inside of that that frame. Uh, yeah, it's very good, very important. Um, 
also when you're shooting the especially when you're shooting the, the the lead singer just to be aware of what the other band members are doing in the background <laughs> you can sort of forget that they are there if you're so focused on the, the lead singer and i mean some people can just look around instead of being engaged you know things like that so just to be to be aware of that i also tell tell the artists that they need to bring at least two outfits and if they if it's a warm climate their outfits need to be the same or or, or 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 at least one their favorite outfit needs to be doubled because they'll be sweating they'll get the butterfly effect on their shirts one of the reasons why we're wearing black in so many of our videos is because we sweat so quickly because we're doing all of this stuff near the equator <laughs> and then we're dancing and performing and we're sweating and it's just it's disgusting and so <laughs> you need to make sure that that you have different outfits and you want to be able to have the director approve or the continuity or the or the stylist approve what the person is wearing i remember one time marcus showed up with only one pair of shorts and they were short short shorts and he's sitting on the drums <laughs> and he's sitting on the drums and his shorts are so short they're going oh my god no <laughs> it was it was uh one of those times where we wish that um uh, yeah and and then beyond that tell a story don't just shoot a video tell a story and keep them engaged keep them engaged what will keep them watching to the end watch christ Safari's music videos and i dare you to find two videos with the same story i dare you to find two videos with the same theme the same look we're going to get into some of those on the next and the next time i i try to show you something i try to teach you something i try to take you somewhere i try to make you feel something and as I said before, application, transformation, what is your call to action? What's your end goal? You should ask the artist this. What was your end goal when you wrote this song? And how can I relay that in the video? And you should ask the artist, how can we gauge or measure success? Is it views? It shouldn't be limited to views. It should be more than that. And so when I shoot a music video like Rescue Me, my goal is to get people to check themselves into a drug rehab center. And that that is how I measure success. When I when I look at the comments on Outsiders, mm -hmm. where we're trying to get people to, to realize that they're not alone and feeling rejected by the church, but to be the change from within. When I look at those comments, I realize those comments are so much more valuable than the likes, the shares, or the view count. So, and if you can have something at the end that they have to wait for, I, I think our minute, our minute watch time is very high, comparatively speaking to most videos. Most times, some videos are 15 seconds. Look at your analytics on Google. Find out how long the average person is watching. Ours is probably in the three minutes for a four and a half minute video that's great but if people are cutting off average by like 20 seconds or whatever when i start watching a music video i start watching i skip forward i skip forward if they don't take me somewhere i'm pretty much done do you do mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. what about you benjamin yeah i think it's very good uh, what you're saying about just um doing those analytics you know just uh, asking yourself the questions um, how long are they watching and uh, what keeps them watching or what keeps them yeah. you know, checking out at some point. Yeah, just keep on asking those questions and then learn from them and see what you can do better next time. And in those analytics, you can learn your audience as well. And if you're the vast majority of your audience speaks a language or, you know, I mean, so obviously when we decided to do Crisis Risen, we decided to do it in part in Argentina because we have such a big audience there in South America. That's why we film so many music videos in Brazil because our biggest audience is Brazil. Double as many, twice as many people watch us from Brazil than from America. What? Serious. But overall, be creative. Be creative. What type of images do you see when you close your eyes, when you hear that song? There is nothing new under the sun, my friends nothing new just repackaging of old stuff 
but be as original as you can. Um, I have a challenge for you. You guys ready? Um, I want you guys to email or, or, to, or to post in the comments. We're doing a, a reggae version of Lauren Daigle's You Say. Avion's singing it. I do a little chat. Um, that song, I'm going to try and, and, and have Connor send you that song in the next two to three days. When he sends it to you, I want you to close your eyes and tell me what you want to do as a treatment, what you would see. And we're going to talk about that in the next session. I want you to email me, booking, uh, or just mark at christfire.com. Mark, M-A-R-K. Somebody post that in the comments. Mark at christfire.com. Tell me, we haven't come up with a treatment yet. We're going to film that video. Lauren Daigle's You Say Reggae very soon. We need a treatment. I'd love to hear your ideas. And we're going to get into a, a whole list of other ideas that I have for music videos in the next session. And these are all free ideas. These are all things that you can do in a music video if you're like, but I don't have those ideas. I don't think like Mark. Well, I can give you some of those ideas. And there's 144 more ideas that we haven't recorded yet, haven't done. But I want to quickly get into don'ts before we get into questions. We don't have a lot of time, so here we go. Common mistakes. Don'ts for cinematography. I'd say, I'm, I'm going to say one, you're going to say one, you're going to say one, okay? Don't run out of space on your hard drive or on your, your, your what are those things called? Cards? SD cards? Don't run out of space mid-shoot. Don't run out of batteries. Okay, Benjamin, you go for one. Well, uh, don't shoot hungry. I think don't I'm shoot gonna... hungry! <laughs> Hangry! <laughs> <laughs> don't well, shoot... I always get to be fed. <laughs> feed them before not not so that they're so fat that they're gonna look good but <laughs> right before we shot with you we had some argentinian steak it was nice <laughs> how about you what, what's one that you have Luis? don't spend twenty thousand dollars don't spend twenty thousand dollars on a music video our first music video twenty thousand dollars record label did it second music video twenty thousand dollars that was valley decision and listening for those two the next music video was free, and each one, all the way up, the most I've ever spent in a music video was $3,000, and that wasn't for what, that, that was mostly for the paying of the person doing the work. It wasn't for, we, we don't, we're going to get into how to do a cheap video on the next one, but you can do a video for free. I did a, I've done quite a few music videos for free or, or virtually free, and you can too. And we're going to talk about that in the, the iPhone music video one and in the next session. Okay, next. Don't wait for the money to come in. I would say don't wait for others to do it for you. Get started. Getting started is 70% of it. 70% of it. Give me another don't, please. Uh, me okay yeah um, i think just uh yeah don't shoot on high iso it's a bit more technical high um, iso okay because that introduces noise which is really ugly in films too. okay okay what what how about you give me give me a don't don't it will be shooting different like the same size you know okay because most of filmmakers commit do that mistake like they are shooting same all the, all all the time the, uh, okay. all the time so it's yeah. easier just go wide shoot whole body middle of the body and close up yeah. like it's here and, and then, also try always to move at least 15 degrees 15 degrees back and forth no it's just you know in some shots it's more like this and okay. try to make different I know, I know one guy, the guy who shot uh, us in, in uh, Yeshua, he did this, basically. He was just dancing the whole time. Would you recommend that or not? <laughs> yes, if, it depends on the styles. There is a okay. bunch of styles, you know, like I'm like that. Like, I, I don't want to be too static. I want to move. Static. static. You don't want to yes. be static. You want to be moving back and forth. Okay, mm -hmm. don't do jump cuts. I think we can we can agree on that. We talked about that as well. I say don't make excuses. Excuses come up with creative solutions. 
Sometimes my translator is loving me right now because I'm talking so fast. Sometimes you'll get painted into a corner and you won't be able to get the rest of the shots or you won't be able to tell the story exactly as you wanted to. Don't make excuses out of that, that, that painting in a corner, make a mural, get creative with it, play to your weakness, not your strength in that case. What else? What, what are some other ones? I would say don't release without color grading. Color grade, color grade, color grade. Go on. Uh, don't overexpose. It's better to underexpose than overexpose. In the show. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's, that's crucial. Yeah. Okay. Work with what you have and who you know is, is essential. I would say don't pay for expensive permits. In all the filming we've ever done, we've only been... You've only been threatened once, and mm -hmm. and, and that was a, a national, uh, what was it? I don't remember. It was Rosanna. It was a national park. Mm -hmm. We went to go and film in a national park, and they saw the cameras and stuff. And and so part of it is just how you carry yourself. You know, if, if you have one person scouting and looking, I mean, people are filming everywhere with their phones. So I don't think that there's a problem yeah. with you being the able to The problem is using a tripod always. If you use a tripod, you're always going to have some problems here. Yeah. In the United States, I don't know the rest of the world. Yeah. Okay, don't try and do every single special effect on your own. Play to your strengths. Hire somebody on Fiverr. Almost every one of our videos, we hire someone on Fiverr or somebody like Benjamin who knows how to do special effects, and we have them do that one thing, like put the moon in or you know, make the cave look more like where Jesus came out of. He raised that people behind. He raised those, the, okay. <laughs> we had to hire somebody for the Two Harbors music video. You know how the drone is flying over the band and going over to that island? There was an, a European guy in a Speedo walking towards the camera, completely ruining the ending shot, and we couldn't go back. We didn't see it on the day of. He got erased. All this plumbing and piping and and houses that were behind us in the waymaker music video mm -hmm. all disappeared when you pull up for jump high like a Maasai and you see the guys and they spell go with their bodies that was an idea i had after the fact i'm like that kind of look hey can you make that a g <laughs> and somebody did so uh definitely that's something you can do i would also say another one don't use too many transition effects one thing i hate with newbie rookie filmmakers is when they use every single transition zoom in zoom out do that it's like oh gosh just you barely do those no you barely do i don't those. i don't like those the transitions and and when he because he doesn't do those a video will look good a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years from now, because it's because our take is more timeless. Mm -hmm. How about you, Benny, anything when you, there? When you plan on, on the shooting day, when you plan your shots, then you don't need those after effects, those transitions anymore. You can actually plan that at the shoot. You can do that at the shoot. You can say, there's a pole. I'm gonna go across the pole, and that's when we'll do the swipe. Yeah, and of course we said it before, but I think it's the most important one. First of all, don't shoot out of focus, right? I mean, that's 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 the one. Number one, don't shoot out of focus. And don't leave the video unfinished. Talking to the perfectionists out there. <laughs> I think at some point you just need to let go, you know? <laughs> Completion is just as important as perfection in fact it's more important because a, a perfect video that's never been released is not perfect yeah. <laughs> so don't skimp on bad lighting bad exposure i said the, sh the led lights are good don't use different types of cameras if you can stick to one type yeah. because that's something you dealt with on the yeah, you are color, loved color grading is a color grading a pain, yeah and make uh, sure that all the settings are both the same on the cameras. Yes. Mm -hmm. Spend time getting the scrolling through. From, from the videos, from um, 
either it's PAL or NTSC to picture profile, uh, color temperature, uh, white balance, uh, pretty much everything. The, the yeah. shutter speed, ISO should be the same. Yeah. yeah. And so in, in doing all this, you, you need to have your subject dressed to impress, make sure that the outfits are, they're just as crucial as the, the person. You can't change the person singing and lead in the song, but what they're wearing, imagine, I, I mean, you saw the music video of Nikita walking on the sand dunes. That outfit was timeless, incredible. Looked like something out of a movie. You have a, a sand dune music video filmed in, in San Luis, right? Yeah. Mad at, what, what was the place called? It in Sois or? I don't know. <laughs> and it, the place with the sand dunes yeah, and the water. Way. The sand dunes and the water. And you guys spent a lot of time getting that. We haven't released it yet but you spent a lot of time getting the costume ready for Marcus. Yeah. That was crucial. And um, then most importantly, guys, beyond being timeless and not just timely, the most important thing we can do in this time and this day in this age is to do it for Jesus. Is, and I want to end with this challenge of challenging you to use your gifts for God Jesus, if he came today, I believe he would come to Hollywood. Why do I say that? Because he was the best storyteller in the world. He told riveting parables, analogies. I mean, the story of the prodigal son was the best movie ever released in, in zero BC. <laughs> best movie ever. Epic. These sagas, these stories, they were so good that people would walk without food for days to follow him. Hanging, feeding off of his stories. We, if we are believers, we have Jesus inside. And if you have the creator inside, you have to be creative. Think about Jesus. Now think about anybody else in that day and age. Were they going around telling stories? Were they talking about seeds to farmers? Were they talking about being fishers of men to fishers? He was relevant. He was one of a kind. You need to be relevant. You need to be one of a kind. So I just want to challenge you to, Jesus told it straight. He told the gospel. He did it creatively. You can do the same. Use your giftings. Use everything you've learned in the same way we did with Hosanna to point people to the cross. Anything you want to add to that, Benjamin, before we open up to questions? Um, yeah, just a, a few additional tips that I have. Like, you can YouTube anything uh, nowadays, whatever yes. you need, troubleshooting, uh, how-tos, learning, growing, find your mentors and get inspiration. Uh, pretty much everything is online. Everything is out there. Yeah. Yeah, take ideas from, from Instagram, take ideas from photographs in terms of uh, composition, lighting, framing, and so on. Um, you can make a Pinterest board. Pinterest is also for free, which is great. Um, you can make a mood board there. Um, yeah, so there's so much nowadays out there. Um, so, But with also so much content out there, I think it's important to, to be intentional from who to learn and what to learn as well. Because there's just there's a lot of great stuff out there, but a, a lot of things that just rubbish, yeah. so. and most importantly, what you do with what you learn. I follow guys in India that shoot at sunset every single day, and they come up with a creative idea every single day. You can learn from other people, but what you do with this and who you point them to will determine who goes to heaven and who doesn't. And so use your giftings for God. We want to hear from you. And so we want to answer some questions. We also have two challenges we want to do. Aside from the Lauren Daigle one is how to make our daughter fly for free in a music video. How can you make a kid look like they're flying? I want to hear your ideas. Email them to mark at Christafari.com. Like Superman used to fly. But in a creative way that works today. Give me your suggestions. I'm researching right, that right now. It took me a long time to figure out how to make Makamai walk on water. 
How did they we do were, that? <laughs> we were trying oh, plexiglass, <laughs> but the but the but it kept sinking in the sand. We were trying special effects. Let's just film the ocean, and then we film her walking. It wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't look natural. So there's this in, in what is it? Um, Pirates of the Caribbean. There's this little all sand island that Johnny Depp lands on. I found out that it was filmed in Hawaii. We were in Hawaii and we found out that this all sand island is a tidal island, meaning that when the tide comes up, it gets to where it's right at the water level. So we went out in the water and shot her walking on this island that you couldn't see because the water was that high. It took probably three months of racking my brain to figure out how to get her to walk on water. And it finally worked. And then we used that. We used a GoPro underwater. And then we used iPhone. a boat. An iPhone underwater? iPhone underwater. How did plastic... you shoot that shot? Huh? How did you shoot that shot that under, from underwater looking upwards? I can't okay. Just... So, so that, that, that was where we got a boat that had a sail. And, and the, what's the arm that goes that the sail is on? Okay. So she's holding onto that. We're holding onto her body from the edge of the boat. And she's here. Go ahead and show. This is one. That's one of them. That's, that's that was shot them. from just the camera below her foot. But mm -hmm. then there was one where yeah, we I'm went under the water ones. and, and now he, we're shooting from below. And then we just, we're holding her body up and she's just doing this with her feet. Just like, it's just barely touching the water. And as she's doing that, um, if you really look, though, you can see in the reflection of the water that there's the arm of the boat. So it's not flawless, but we did our best, and we did we did all that for the cost of renting a boat for for uh, uh, like. A, uh, you were stepping on me, remember? Because I float, you know. So. Oh, oh yeah, I was stepping on him to keep him down. <laughs> and I was like, the hardest part of that video was this. Makamai was a fantastic model but I practiced with her in a pool to get her to hold her breath for a long period of time. And she'd go under the water and she could only hold her breath for 10 seconds and her head would be like this. I'd be like, you can't do that, girl. You gotta be like 30 feet down there. <laughs> and so how did we get that shot? We paid a girl $100 who had been training to be a mermaid <laughs> in a restaurant who could hold her breath for like three or five minutes and we had her in the same outfit and Luis couldn't even go that low. We had to, yeah, we had to get I did a, it. I did that shot. You, you did that shot. Yes. Okay. We, we had to get a skin one. diver to go down and take some of the shots because it's not easy, but yeah, yeah you nice. work around it. We had to, we had to create all this. Okay. Let's open it up for questions. Here we go. First question. Um, let's start from the top. Uh, does the song always lead to the video or something or sometimes an idea for the video come and that creates a song usually for me it, it starts with a song but i i now marry those two so when i'm creating the song i'm starting to create the idea for the story with the song mm -hmm. you are loved i wrote the story of the guy losing his wallet and being chased i wrote that story three five years ago um, so sometimes the idea comes before and then you realize, hey, put these two together. But um, yeah, it definitely. Okay, let's see another one. Ken Sheehan, don't fall out of a canoe into a piranha infested river while filming a music video in the Amazon jungle. Oh my gosh. Ken Sheehan was our, our at that time, co-manager. He, he was our onstage guy for everything. He was kicking butt and he's dressed in fatigues. We we were in, this is our first music video we did on our own. Um, we were in uh, Suriname and we were still waiting to get to get our, our expenses covered and our passports from the promoter. And so we found a guy who could film a music video for free. The problem was this guy had only done TV filming, like a car accident on the side of the road type of thing. So he wasn't the best, best, but we worked with it and we were paddling in our canoes and then we had to get out of the water, but we had to get out of the water in piranha infested 
I mean, the rivers were full of piranhas. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's like, act normal, act tough, act cool. And the, the deepest thing, this is, a, this is an interesting story. <laughs> deepest thing that happened on that, on that shoot, aside from getting a lot of mosquito bites from cutting through with machetes, was this. When we came up, we were coming together. This is for warriors. We were coming together, and we were all supposed to kneel down. We were holding machetes, and one of the guys kneeled on his machete. And it cut his knee open to where he would need probably 10, 15 stitches. Blood, like that. And we were just like, ah! We had to be prepared. But we weren't prepared. And then out of the jungle comes this bush man. They call them... It sounds insensitive, but they call them Bush Negroes. They were the original Maroons. They had arrived on a slave ship. They had escaped the second they arrived and lived in the jungle and been taught by the Amazonian tribes. And he sees the cut. He goes over, he grabs some weeds and some bushes and stuff. He puts them together. He puts it on the guy's knee. And the thing goes like this. And the guy never needed stitches. If I could find that weed that that guy used, I'd be a multi-billionaire. Whatever it was, <laughs> it instantly healed it. But that was a crazy story of our first music video on our own. Wow. <laughs> what type of software do you guys use to edit your videos? Benny, you go first. Uh, I use Final Cut. So do I. And you use? I use uh, Adobe Premiere. Yeah, I think both are great. I, I Final Cut for me is, is better for ease of use, but um, I love the, the ability to stack with Premiere and to edit similar to how I edit with with vocals. Um, yeah, it's I think they're both great. It doesn't matter what you use. It matters how you apply yourself to learning every day. The most important thing you can learn are key commands. Mm -hmm. If you can learn that, shortcuts you will become a genius like that. So every day, study another tutorial on how to use that. And which one is the cheapest? Do you know which one is cheaper? How much is Adobe? I think it's a subscription, uh, right? Yeah, I pay $30 a monthly. Okay. And I can use all the softwares. The monthly $30 is not bad if you're doing a music video every month, but if you're only doing <laughs> one a year, it's, it's pretty expensive. <laughs> I think I paid like around 300 for the final cut. Yeah, for the whole oh, thing. Okay. It, it needs a few plugins though. So mm -hmm. it, the price quickly went up higher. Yeah. We actually use both in our videos. We use final cut for the titles and for some of the transitions and some of the plugins. Um, but, and for all my sound design, I use digital performer for sound design. It's what, it's what all the cinematographers and, and, and music directors for movies use and so you can also do it in logic but you see the video playing and you're doing the sounds for it in real time so that's great todd walker hey todd what's up dude love you bro what about lens flares some of these can be manufactured like you can grab some plugs and you can drag them in we used a lot of those and, and light leaks and mm -hmm. um what was the video here i am to worship yes um, those are great if you want to add them later, but how do you get the effect in real life? So you can, uh, for example, use a flashlight that you that you sort of hold in a 45 degree angle to the camera and just so You could use that or you can use the yeah. Sun or so you shoot against the Sun you can yeah. also get Shooting against the sun. Yeah mm -hmm. Now with uh, with an iPhone sometimes you'll get that green dot when you do that right which is no fun <laughs> You know that not well. You're like, that's the one flaw. Yeah. <laughs> but interestingly enough, guys, the most expensive camera you'll ever get is the latest iPhone or Samsung or whatever. Uh, it, it may be that, um, unless you can afford a really nice one. So let's talk about gear, about, about cameras. What do you use, Benjamin? I use the Sony uh, A7 Mark III. Same as you have, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I, ha I have one that I don't use, but you use it for I me. It <laughs> and you edit on it. You edit everything on a laptop, correct? Yes. So Mac Pro, MacBook Pro, um, you edit on on the on a, on a real computer or iMac, and you use a different kind of camera. My favorite kind of camera. Tell me about your camera. 
Eh, ok, I, I always use Canon. Canon. Because I like the skin color for some reason. And I use the 70D and the 5R. Canon 5R. Okay, 5R7. What I love about the Canon, and so pretty much anything about how many videos have you shot for us? 30? Okay, actually, I counted today and it's 43. <laughs> High five. But, 40. It's, but yeah, like. Some are still in the process. And yeah, no, but it's like 10. I work a little bit, you know, yeah. like I shot something yeah, and I parts. edited, yeah. but. Yeah. 43, that's a lot of music videos. So in that, the the all of those except for two mm -hmm. are you are that camera the camera the canon what are the the newest okay the newest music video yeah what i love about those is just how natural and how how you don't have to do a lot of color grading and color correction and the challenge with the stonies is though you you have more to pl to play around with when it comes to color correction you have to know what you're doing yeah you, you have to that. know how to program the camera for the shoot for the day you have to know how to color correct and you're still and so we we just shot a video uh with could you be loved you are loved sorry you are loved and the challenge with that is the settings weren't right going in for some of the shots and it was just like almost black and white we couldn't get color out of it and what what was it what would have fixed that what could we have done to fix that do you know or do you know Benjamin, <laughs> because yeah, he's talking about the, the B, B locks. So when you add the the color, it's a like color grading inside the camera, you know. Yeah. To have more latitude, and uh, in post production, and the problem with that is like it was it wasn't well exposed. It was overexposed for me. So mm. there is no way like you can get the colors if it's whites yeah. you know so that that goes back to exposure again exposure, exposure. Yeah. but the reason why you want to shoot on a very flat picture profile is so that you have more to work with later you can you can yeah. do many adjustments afterwards that's first yeah. and actually, i like first one is the, the, the dynamic range that you're getting as well so you get a lot of details in the shadows and a lot of details in the highlights yes so okay that, um, what what you can do with the sony um, is that it, it has an assist. So you, you um, change to a very flat picture profile, but then you can, you have like a, um, a internal uh, LUT that it will put on, but it will not shoot, that, that LUT will not be engraved in the footage, mm -hmm. but it will just be for you to see on the display. Yeah, you're you still for, still real day image, yeah. I know. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I'm not sure if you have that with, your Canon, Canon gear? Yeah, you Pro. can you can use the, yeah, you okay. can use it. Yeah. Well, I won't use it. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna blaze through these, the rest of these questions. The song Trailblazers, was it hard to record? In the studio, easy. The music video, easy. Editing, uh, it so that we appear and disappear and things like that, not so easy. But it was, it was a blast. I loved filming in Bogota. I love filming anywhere in, in South America, all over the world. Um, next question, what what depends on whether a capture or filming during the, the edits lower its quality? Not sure what that means. What depends on whether a capture or filming during the editing lowers its quality? I think we're, I think we're again, we're talking about exposure mm -hmm. and, and, and the lighting. I think know where the sun is and work with it don't have it work against you that mm -hmm. would be my advice there because um the weather changes a lot and and i how many movies i mean the movie 1917 they were struggling so much for a continuous shot because it had to be perfect cloud covering and the second the sun came out they had to stop <laughs> so you definitely have to keep that in mind okay someone else says i filmed a music video once and the director was adamant that he could get fined if we filmed in permitted areas without a permit have you ever experienced this or know someone who has okay 
everybody's filming everything all over the world, including George Floyd's death, using phones. It's it's a common thing, and every, and people are doing it with cameras as well. So for you to do that is not a problem. If you start bringing out honey wagons and dollies and gaffers and lights and all this giant stuff, if you bring this huge ensemble, if you bring a, a closet full of stuff with hangers on it and outfits and a stylist and makeup and people are going to say, do you have a permit? But we don't bring any of that stuff. We leave that stuff in the car. We run back and get it. We have a boom. We have a, a reflector guy and somebody playing the phone. And we have the, the actor. We have the, the person shooting and maybe one other person. So maximum five people. And if we see somebody coming, we spread it out. And we pretend like we're doing a photo shoot. You can't tell the difference. Maybe having music for the photo shoot for vibes. But and we just kind of read it. But no, we have not been fined. We've only been threatened once. Any any other advice regarding that? I think just generally, like, if you are quick and also if you're respectful to the place, if you just leave it as you found it, you know, then yeah. you're fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you guys use After Effects? Anybody here use After Effects? OK, well, he's about ready to. <laughs> for a music video, if you know After Effects oh, really he's well, going, he's going to show me the. If magic you know After button. Effects well, we want you to email me, and we have a project for you. Mark at Christafari.com. That's M-A-R-K at Christafari.com. We're doing a double exposure music video where the shadows and the head will have waterfalls or city or this or that. If you know it, please, we could use it. Is iMovie a decent program to use for beginners? Is iMovie still around? Yes, okay. I, I still edit my stories. In, you on my okay, I from what I understood, iMovie became Final Cut. Did it? No. Oh no. So. No. Yeah, okay. Final Cut took kind of the the layout of the iMovie. Final Cut is is Final Cut owned by Mac? Yes. Now yes. Okay, so yeah, I think it's iMovie and then Final Cut because it's virtually the same. When I made the jump from one to the next, I didn't even realize the difference for yeah, the most part. I used before Final Cut and this was different, completely different. Yeah, so uh, iMovie is a great place to start. Yes. Whatever you do, just apply yourself. This is not going to be easy. Work, 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 work. Apply yourself, learn, work, learn, work, learn. How to start in cinematography? What are some tips? I think that's what this whole class has been about. Great question. You, we will be sending you a video of this, not immediately, but shortly. Connor will be sending you a video of this that you can review. Please don't share it with others. Um, this class is just for you guys. And lastly, uh, Angel says, have a curiosity, tell us, how was the take with the tiger of Good Good Father? <laughs> I love that song in the video too. Actually, that, that take, Nikita was the one. Nikita who, shot it. I was with sleeping her iPhone. in the office. Yeah, you were sleeping. He, he wished he wasn't taking a nap that day. Um, <laughs> it was super simple. The funny thing was is that we forgot when we released Asante Sana that there was a, a picture of me petting a white lion singing Asante Sana. But that that's just for another day. Um, it was super easy, super chill. When I watched the video later on and I saw that there were six tigers walking behind me and walking towards <laughs> me. Whew. But they were they were just big cats. It was fun. It was scary. I definitely prayed beforehand and kissed my wife and kid just in case that was the last time. But <laughs> speaking of last time, this is the end of our time. We're already 15 minutes over. I love you guys so dearly. The next classes that we are going to be having is Wednesday, June 10th. We're going to continue, and we're going to talk about no-budget music videos. And if any of these guys can join, that would be great. But we're going to come up with creative ways, 5 p.m. next Wednesday, same time as this one was this week. And on iPhone. And, yeah, and then after the that, smartphone. what is your iPhone? The smartphone filmmaking is on June 17th. June 17th. So those ones are absolutely crucial. And then the last one, the last Friday... Uh, we want to encourage you on, the, I believe it's the 26th, it, the last Friday. Yeah, Connor is posting in the chats. Last Friday is how to become a full-time missionary and then how to raise funds to do so. 
And that's how we cover the cost of all of our videos. And we don't do them out of pocket. We raise funds to, to help uh, get the message out to the world. And we want to teach you all of our ninja skills. Thank you so much, you guys. We love you so dearly. Go with God. Use your giftings for Jesus. It's all about him. Peace out. <laughs>